Good morning, folks, and welcome to our webinar for today on revamping business processes using theory of constraints tools. Just a couple housekeeping things before we get started. I will be taking questions at any time during the webinar. All you have to do is raise your hand or send me a question, and I'm going to try and deal with them right there on the spot rather than wait for the very end and go back and answer everybody's question. So let's go over what we're going to be talking about today on this webinar. Today we're going to look at Goldratt's thinking process. This is a companion process to his theory of constraints. We're going to look at current state process mapping, future state process mapping, and most important, how to get the process owners motivated to implement change that has to happen. So Ellie Goldratt in 1984 came out with his original work, The Goal, which I have one of the copies right in my hand here. Subsequent to that, he came out with a companion process called the thinking process. Thinking process is no more than the scientific method for analyzing an issue. It consists of six major areas, a generic cloud, which is defining what the problem is, core conflict, which looks at the two competing things that you're trying to achieve that are in direct conflict with each other. Both of these things are valid things that have to be done though. From there we create a current reality tree and that describes the way it is right now. From that we create a future reality tree, what we want the process or the system or the problem to look like when we solve it. The next step deals with people's natural resistance to change. And the last step is getting buy-in. Now the areas that we're going to concentrate on today are the current reality tree, the future reality tree, and most important, getting the process owner's buy-in to actually make the change happen. It starts out by interviewing process owners. A few years back at one of my clients recording for the blind and dyslexic right here in Princeton, New Jersey, they brought me on to help them to figure out how to revamp their business processes because their market was growing, their demand was growing, but they were unable to keep up with the demand from the manufacturing point of view. What we did here was a series of process owner interviews. Now a little bit about recording for the blind and dyslexic. Their headquarters is here in Princeton, New Jersey, and at the time we did these interviews they had 32 recording studios spread throughout the geographic United States. We took and did a review of individual processes that required us to interview about 12, 15 process owners. Some of the process owners, they did the same process but in different locations. So we have multiples that we were looking at for the exact same process to figure out what everybody was doing. In these interviews, it would start out with having the process owner describe the process that they use today to accomplish their task. They would go through in great detail with all of the systems that they had to interact with, all the people they had to interact with, the things that they were trying to do. Once we got that down, and to be honest with you, I used to set a tape recorder in the middle of the conference table and record so that we could get everything on tape because so, I couldn't write as fast as they were telling me how things went. 
when we got done how their process worked, I would have them tell me all of the problems that were created by this current process. And that would go on, depending on the process, it would go on for half an hour to two hours describing all the problems that the current process was creating for them in particular as process owners. After several weeks of doing these process owner interviews, we took all of this information and what we created was what is called a current state process map. In Goldratt's term, this would be the current reality tree. What you're seeing on the screen right now is about 1 20th of the current reality tree process map that we did for recording for the blind and dyslexic. Once we had it documented how all of these processes were interrelated, how the problems were being created by the processes, we were then at a point where I needed the process owners to come in and validate whether this current state process map was correct. So what we did, we brought everybody to Princeton, sat them down in a conference room, went over the process step by step by step through all of the umpteen different processes that we analyzed. The process owners, their job was to validate that we got it right or show us where, no, it didn't actually work that way, here's what happened. At the end of that very long day, we came up with a group of about 15 people, all the process owners, in agreement with the current state process map and the problems that were being created with the process the way we were doing it at that time. And I will tell you that with RFB and D, they had four major pieces of software that didn't talk to each other, and they had 15 different Excel and Access applications that they were using to make this whole organization work. So they had a whole bunch of disconnected systems here. The interesting thing from a personal standpoint of the individuals involved, these were people that had been working together for years, and they knew what their problem was. They always thought it was the other guy causing it. And what they started to come to a realization from this current, process, current state process map review, where we had them all in the same room, was that they were all basically fighting the same problem. From there, we went to the magic wand series. Now, the magic wand is my term. You see, during those interviews that we did before we created the current process map, they were actually a two-part process. Typically, it would be in the morning, we would talk about the current process and all of its problems. Then we would take a break for lunch, and when we came back, I'd set the stage, and I'd tell them, okay, I'm going to wave my magic wand on the process that we did, were talking about this morning, and all the problems are going to be corrected magically. Tell me what the process would look like if all the problems were gone. What this did was it allowed the process owners to share with me what their vision of the process would be if, quote, you had a magic wand and could implement this right away. We did this with all of the people that we interviewed, all of the process owners. From this point, I went away with the project manager and we took all of these suggestions from the process owners of what their process would look like in order to get rid of all the problems that they were dealing with. And we created a future state process map. 
here's what the entire process would look like if we got rid of all the problems. Now, it was a combination of the process owner's ideas and some best-in-class research that the project manager and I went out and did trying to find examples outside of RFB and D that did the same process to what we called the premier level. They were doing it right. We wanted to try to model that. From that, we came up with the future state process map. What this map was designed to do, and again, this is about 1 20th of the entire map. Uh, if you're familiar with engineering drawing sizes, this entire map is on an e size drawing that you could plaster on a wall and it would take up most of the wall. What it did was it solved the major problems. Where we could incorporate the process owner's suggestions, we did that. Where we brought in outside processes from our premier process people, they were incorporated also. In order to make sure that this was really going to work, we brought all the process owners back to Princeton again, ran through the new future state process map, and the way we set the stage for that meeting, you all need to tear this thing apart and tell us what is not going to work, where we got it wrong, where we make changes. I will tell you that we had a long meeting that day they came up with some suggestions, some issues. We went back and tweaked the future state process map two more times, did quick teleconference reviews of the future state map with the entire team, and ultimately, within a few weeks, got them all buying in that this new future state, these new processes, would solve not only their particular problem, but the organization's problem of trying to take all these disconnected, all of these disconnected um, processes and tying them all together. Interestingly enough, again, that group of people, those 15 people, really took ownership of this entire future state process map. They saw that this was going to solve their problem in their processes and also solve the company's problem in how to get more product out the door to the customers. They were so involved in wanting to get this thing done that we actually had competition between the process owners about who was going to get to be on the implementation team. Everybody, all 15 of them, wanted to be on the implementation team so that they could get their part done so that they could start benefiting from the changes as soon as possible. We actually had some creative lotteries won and some uh, self-selecting done by the process owners, and we actually came up with an implementation team of eight people plus the project leader and myself. They all were motivated to make this change happen. Interestingly enough, they went out and bought new software to help implement the process changes that they had defined in this future state process map, and the software people didn't know what hit them when the implementation team gave them a script of what they wanted to see when they came in to demo their software rather than having the software people come in and show them all the bells and whistles that they didn't need. Ultimately, this type of process delivered the results that RFB and D was looking for and that a lot of organizations are looking for. They defined what they wanted, they implemented the solution, and they did it on time and on budget. So 
in wrapping this up, and then I'm going to open it up for anybody that has questions. We took a component of theory of constraints, Goldratt's thinking process, applied a couple of the areas of the think thinking process to how this organization needed to modify their business practices, creating a current state process map, a future state process map, and most importantly, at the end of the project, we got all of the process owners to become process champions, and they actually drove the change. So with that, I will open it up for questions. Anyone have any questions?